those you know those old songs stick around is because they're stuck in the collective consciousness. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people dug those, and 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 that's why they stay alive. Um, so there's a there's a plus to that. The negative to that is that, like you said, it's 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 usually hard to get people to kind of break out of that once they've established whatever it is that is going to be their thing. Mm-hmm. Now, as a musician, the advantage that we have as far as developing flexibility with regard to different styles of music is that it's really all the same stuff, you know? So um, common practice music is common practice music. You know, the way the chord progressions work, Mm -hmm. the the way that they tend to work, um, and and even in voice leading principles, um, in if I grew up and I'm all about bebop, you can hear the bebop in pop music. It's there. The chromaticism, the use of all of the notes in the chord scale, even the use of stuff like minor seven flat five chords mm-hmm. in, you know, in pop music. Um, you can hear it in gospel. You can hear it in, um, you know, in R&B. And country is nothing but is, is still R&B. It's still the same stuff. Um, bluegrass is nothing but the banjo players playing bebop. You know? Um, so you can hear all how it's... But the thing is, is that there are certain aesthetics that you have to, you have to either overcome, like in your own head, as why you don't want to deal with this. Like, a lot of people don't like country. Say, oh, I can't stand that twang and this. But if, but if you can, if you can overcome that visceral reaction that you have, and dig a little bit deeper, then you'd be like, wait a minute here. This is like the same stuff. This is like all the same stuff. Like everything is functioning the same way. The feel of the music, it's like, oh snap! Like this is actually, you know, I actually really dig this, you know. Um. So. You know, as a as a musician, the advantage that we have is because if you know enough about music, period, about the fundamentals of the music, then then it's then it's easy to look at pretty much any kind of music and and see how there's a lot of similar. Oh, oh, this is the same stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think the more of the same stuff that you recognize, then you can start to okay, I I can handle this, and let me let me try to nuance to to adjust to certain aesthetics and maybe timbres. You know, and cliches, you know, native to this subgenre or whatever, however you want to categorize it. The other thing is, is the term, and I just use the term, but the term genre is actually not a, that's not a musician's term. That's a record company's term. Okay? The record industry develops, has developed all these different genres. Because they want to, th- they they're trying to sell to certain, you know, they, 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 it, it's a it's a way to. Um, it's a marketing tool. Yeah, it's a marketing tool. It's a way to maximize uh, your money, mm-hmm. you know, get the most out of your money. So well, these kind of folks, they're into this, and these kind of folks are into this. And you create all these sort of genres, and then. Uh, so these categories are helpful to the record industry. These categories do not help us at all. They're not beneficial. They do not help us. They, matter of fact, they do more to hurt us than they do to help us. Mm-hmm. Because it, it gives us the illusion that, uh, in essence, these, uh, these styles of music are, are different, are very different. When actually, in essence, they are the same. And only in, in nuance are they different. 